When I was new to rail fanning, I remember going to Google Images and searching for Amtrak. Of course, I saw pictures of P-42s and ACS-64s that I saw all the time where I lived, but I also saw pictures of locomotives I had never seen before. These locomotives were streamlined and sleek with a simple yet clean silver and blue paint scheme with the classic Amtrak logo on the nose. They were often pictured running parallel to the ocean and in stations lined with palm trees. These colorful photos made my home state of Massachusetts seem drab in comparison, but they got me intrigued as to where these picturesque trains were. I figured this train was in one of two places, either Florida or California. Luckily, my guess was correct. These trains were known as the Pacific Surfliners, running between San Luis Obispo, California and San Diego, California. They quickly became my favorite train, simply because I liked the shape of the streamlined front end of the F-59 PHI locomotives. When I went to California in April of 2019, I made sure to bug my parents to take me rail fanning. After enough constant nagging, I got to film the F-59s in action. Seeing the F-59s in person made me like them even more. Realizing how unique the Surfliner route was, and that it had cool looking trains that ran on quite possibly the most scenic Amtrak route paralleling the Pacific Coast. I came to love the rail line between Oceanside and San Diego because not only did it host the Surfliner, my new favorite Amtrak route, but it also hosted Coaster and Metrolink, two local commuter rails that also rostered F-59 PHI locomotives. Coaster ran on the line between San Diego and Oceanside while Metrolink continued from Oceanside to Los Angeles. Coaster was a unique operation in that it was a pretty small commuter rail that was relatively new. They only had one line and a few locomotives, but all those locomotives were F40 PHs and F59 PHIs, both of which I liked a lot. Additionally, they were in a colorful paint scheme that complemented their surroundings in San Diego County. I really liked Coaster, but there was also Metrolink, which was a bit of an oddball commuter rail. They owned a lot of trackage in the greater Los Angeles area, and their fleet was a hodgepodge of non-matching cars and three different types of locomotives. F-59 PHs, F-59 PHIs, and MP-36s. All of these engines were also in two different paint schemes, and weirdest of all, most equipment on Metrolink had ugly sounding P-2 horns due to the original K-5LAs being too loud. I guess I liked Metrolink, but not as much as Coaster and the Surfliner. Between the time that I was in California in 2018 and my next trip in 2019, there began to be a sudden urge of railroads replacing their aging equipment. For Amtrak, this meant the F-59 PHIs, which were all approaching 20 years old. For Metrolink, this meant the F-59 PHs, which were already more than 25 years old, and their F-59 PHIs, which were about the same age as Amtrak's. In places like Massachusetts, we just rebuild our ancient locomotives over and over until they're basically piles of rust. Case in point, MBTA's GP40 MCs. These things were originally built almost 50 years ago and they're still in active service. In California when locomotives get old, they're more often retired and replaced with more environmentally friendly locomotives because the state offers tax credits and partially pays for the new equipment for the railroads who have less diesel emissions. Because of these benefits, it often makes more financial sense to buy all new engines. In preparation for the F-59s reaching 25 years old, in 2015 Amtrak and Metrolink placed orders both with different manufacturers. Amtrak went with Siemens, ordering 14 SC44 Charger locomotives for the Surfliner, while Metrolink contracted EMD, now widely known as Progress Rail, to build them a fleet of 40 unique locomotives to replace the F-59s and expand service. These EMD locomotives were called F-125 Spirit locomotives. Both the SC44s and F-125s were pretty different mechanically, with the chargers being powered by a turbocharged 95-liter Cummins QSK95 V16 capable of 4,400 horsepower and a top speed of 125 miles per hour. On the other hand, the Spirits were powered by a turbocharged 105.8 liter Caterpillar C175-20 V20 capable of 47 horsepower and a top speed of 125 miles per hour. The Chargers have pretty basic prime movers, but this is one of the first times a locomotive has been powered by a Cummins motor. The F-125s though are pretty weird, being powered by a V20. As far as I know, this is one of the first V20 powered locomotives, so that's pretty cool. Both of these locomotives are tier 4 compliant, meaning that they have low emissions, so the state of California helped to pay for them. Metrolink took delivery of their first F-125 in 2016, while Amtrak took delivery of their first SC-44 in 2018. Around that time in 2018, Coaster, realizing that their fleet of F-40s and F-59s was getting pretty old, placed an order with Siemens for 5 SC-44s nearly identical to Amtrak's. At this point, the surf line was already starting to look more like a modern rail corridor between Los Angeles and Oceanside, with the line being ruled by Chargers and F-125s. By 2019, Amtrak had all of their Chargers in service, selling off the last F-59 PHIs to Metra, a commuter rail in Chicago. I was lucky enough to film the last two, 458 and 459, in their last week of service. By 2020, Metrolink had almost all of their F-125s in service, and they retired and stored all F-59-based locomotives. 
In late 2020, Coaster took delivery of their five chargers, with the final run of the F-40s and F-59s being in February of 2021. To go along with the procurement of the chargers, Coaster has been rebuilding and repainting many of their Bombardier bi-level cars to match the brand new chargers for the next 25 years of service. Nowadays, in 2021, the Surfline has entered a new era of Tier 4 compliant locomotives. With this new era on the Surfline in full swing in 2021, let's visit the Surfline to see some of these fresh new locomotives in action. First up, let's visit Metrolink. We're at Oceanside, the furthest south you can see Metrolink in California. This is Metrolink 860, an inland Empire Line train to San Bernardino, leading its F-125 number 936. Notice how quickly it accelerates compared to older EMDs, and also notice how loud the K2 horn is. As I said earlier in this video, Metrolink generally uses two chime horns on their equipment because it's quieter, but this K2 is louder than a lot of five chime horns I've heard. Alright, how about a few more F-125s? This right here is Metrolink 667 to Los Angeles. Here it is deadheading into Oceanside as this train lays over for a while so it needs to get out of the way for 860, the train we just saw. Today's 667 is led by a Hyundai Rotom bi-level cab car, but on the end of it is a duo of two F-125s pushing into LA. Unlike on the MBTA in my hometown of Boston, doubleheaders on Metrolink aren't uncommon, but they're still fun to see. These two F-125s generate a combined 9400 horsepower, which if you don't know is a crazy amount of power. Alright, now let's move to Amtrak. Unlike Metrolink, Amtrak uses chargers on the Surfliner and they've been in service for quite some time. Here at Oceanside you see something that you don't see so often everywhere else on the Surfline. This is Amtrak 580 and 785 meeting at Oceanside, both of which are powered by SC44s. Additionally, the engineer on 785 gave us a shave and a haircut. Let's go down to Del Mar, one of the most scenic and iconic spots on this line. Here's Amtrak 777, a Pacific Surfliner to San Luis Obispo. Pushing it north is a duo of SC44s providing 8800 horsepower. One of these SC44s served as protect power in San Diego, serving as the backup engines for trains with mechanical issues, but it needs to be inspected in Los Angeles, so here it is going north. Finally, let's see one more SC44 leading a Surfliner. This is 768 at Del Mar giving a few friendly blasts of the horn. Alright, last but definitely not least, let's visit Coaster, my new personal favorite of the three railroads down here. Here's 691 arriving at Oceanside with a brand new Charger leading a freshly repainted train of bi-levels. Believe it or not, this paint scheme seen on Chargers was not the original plan for them. Coaster held a vote on what paint scheme they should paint these locomotives in, and when a colorful new scheme was chosen, Siemens straight up rejected it in favor of this boring one. I don't mind this paint scheme, but I prefer the more fun concept paint schemes. Finally, here's that same set on 685 at Del Mar. 
I must say, although I wish these chargers were in a more colorful paint scheme, I really like the way they look now, with a teal front end. For a while, the Surfliner was my favorite railroad in San Diego County, but I think that nowadays, since the F-59s on Amtrak are gone, Coaster is my new favorite. I'm sure this is an unpopular opinion, but I think I might like the Coaster Chargers more than the old F-40s, and possibly even the F-59s. For the past 25 years, rail fans such as myself have grown up being fascinated with the unique F-59 PHIs that ran along the coast, but for the first time ever, the F-59s are gone and it's clear that the F-125s and SC-44s are the new faces of the surfline. I know that right now, a lot of rail fans don't like these locomotives because they're perceived as being boring and ugly, but many don't consider that people said the same thing about the F-59s when they were new. Whether you like it or not, as these locomotives get older, people will begin to appreciate them more and future generations of rail fans will be fascinated by the Spirits and Chargers instead of F-59s. Additionally, I also think that the Surfline is far ahead of many other passenger rail networks in the country, and railroads such as Metro North, the MBTA, and the Long Island Railroad will start to look similar, as their older locomotives are retired and new ones are ordered. But until then, the Surfline is an isolated example of what a modern passenger rail corridor looks like, and I think that's pretty cool. Anyways, for those who enjoy watching videos of trains with no annoying narration over them, I'll be uploading the raw footage from my trip to California in exactly one week, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. By the way, if you're watching this video when it's not new, the link to the raw footage is in the description. Okay, bye.